Welcome, 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 welcome. Get your green hats, they're available at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. So, taking our 24 by 24 inch canvas, we've covered the entire thing with Bob Ross Liquid Clear, and then we took a little bit of blue, some green, some phthalo green, some phthalo blue, Prussian blue, all over the canvas. You can sort of see where the colors are, right? You can sort of tell. What's happening, everybody? Hey, Kylie, Airy Fairy Fae just joined. We got everybody in here. So tap the screen, share the live, do everything you got to do in order to make the video go crazy, right? I think my like to beat, like taps on the screen, was 1.1 million. So you've got some work to do. <laughs> if you want to... Uh, if you want to be the best crowd ever, you've got some work to do. Start tapping away on that screen. And what we're going to do is sort of a recreation of one of the paintings. Well, a couple of the paintings we've been doing. A little graveyard, spooky little scene. So I want to have all my shadows going this way. Hmm, actually, we can make the shadows come this way. What if we had a little, little pop of something right out here? Like a little X shape. X marks the spot, right? Thank you for the little heart-shaped gif. I love you. Love you for those things. I can't I can't always see them, but sort of if I catch them on the screen at the right time, I can sort of say thank you. So thank you for the gifts, guys. I'm up here in front of the camera versus being back behind the camera where I can't see your guys' comments. So we've got the mods in there that'll tell you where to go in order to get this painting. If you wanted to purchase it, you can go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And then once you're over there, search for 950. This is the 950th painting that I've done. That's really crazy. Okay, I'm going to take this white on the back of the brush, just like that. Not the back side, just the front side. Not the back, just the front. Come up here and let's pop a crazy old moon. Just push flat on the brush. Rotate it around until it's this crazy circle. And as long as you can keep it right in the center and not go too nuts, you know what I mean? Then you'll have a pretty circular, awesome little moon out there. Turned out fantastic. So, Remember, you're going to be able to name this painting as well. If it gets purchased during the show, then a lot of the times the buyer will let somebody in the comments name it. So as we get towards the end, start thinking up a name. Don't try to touch your moon over here. Oof, be bad if you touched it. There we go. Just a soft little bit of something, a little bit of color, a little light emanation from the moon out there, right? So it is for sale. You can buy it and you're going to be able to name it. So start coming up with a name as you're watching and as you're you know, enjoying the show and checking out my beautiful jawline until we go like this and look at you guys. <laughs> so take a little bit more white on the brush. <clears throat> Let's decide. Maybe we had a crazy bit of cloud. If we can catch a bit of green. Oh, and then blue. Come down through here. Leave a little bit of circular, a little bit of dark area in between our bits of color. And that way it'll provide a little depth. Take a little pop back here, a little pop back there. Doesn't have to look like anything you've ever seen before, right? There is no specific shape for a cloud, so don't come and tell me that it doesn't look like a cloud, because it does. And if it doesn't right now, it will. Trust. Trust the process. Get that big old chunk of skin out of there. Boop. Oh, I think I shot it back onto the carpet. That's going to be bad. There's just a little piece of it. Maybe I'll never find it. It's okay. So tell me where you're watching from, guys. What's your... No, you know what I say? What's your favorite sandwich all the time? What would be your favorite last meal? If you were ever going to have anything for the last time, what are you having for your last meal? Tell me where you're watching from. What's that last meal that you're consuming right before the earth explodes, right? What are you going to eat just then as we take our color when we mix it back and down? Look at all these colors that show up, you guys. Oh, look at that. The green, the blue, the green, the phthalo green. It all changes and moves about the canvas. Oh, ye canvas of dark clouds and stormy seas. Fantastic, you guys. Look at that. The harder we push, the more we're going to drag that light color further away into the clouds, right? The lighter that we push, the brighter it will stay, and then it won't want to move anywhere, right? Just go over it lightly. It stays very bright. doesn't really move. That's wicked little, like wisps like the wind is just blowing up there tell me that's not the coolest thing you've ever seen before just tell me nicole this one is available for 269.99 free worldwide shipping anywhere in the world custom packaging and you get paint with josh stickers uh, as a little freebie so 
269 for this guy, free shipping, rounds of furled, and it's going to be fantastic. Oh, I'm going to love it, and you're going to love it. It's going to be fantastic. Let's get a little of our color on the, or off of our brush so we can reload some white paint onto the brush. Got to have some clean white paint if you want it to be nice and vibrant. Catch all those colors. You don't want to overdo and overmix this and have this be green. And we're not going to show as well, right? Now, you got all this color back here. It gets really dark, very bright. It gets darker and darker and darker. And then, pow, that's where you pop in your next bit of cloud. Same thing here. You bring it up into some of that uh, under bit of our cloud. Maybe save some of the under section. All depends on what you want to do but we want to bring enough clouds down to where we're going to have a little bit of light under here that we can pop our trees off against, right? It's a very flat scene. This one's a very flat composition. So a lot of sky, right? And then very flat, very low. We'll probably only use about this much of actual like grassy hills and stuff like that. And then our trees are going to come up to about here. So we need one more little section of cloud to come in. Again, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite last meal as I come back and read some of these last meal comments? Because they're always my favorite thing to read. The last meal comments. Here we go. What are we working on tonight? We're going to be making a spooky Halloween graveyard scene in greens and blues with all sorts of fog and, and um, uh, gravestones and all sorts of stuff. Right? Spooky Halloween scene. That's what we're going to be working with today. So tell me where you're watching from. What's that favorite last meal? If you were ever going to eat, the earth was about to explode tonight. And you're like, I, that's it. I'm eating this. I don't care if I'm allergic. I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to eat it, right? What's that last meal that you're going to have? I'm going to come back with a bit more white onto our brush and then pop into this dark area just like that. Pow! How you like me now? Right? We don't want the two bits of brightest area to touch. So leave a little bit of space. And as it works from its brightest to its darkest spot, boom! In comes the next section, right? Again, leaving dark spots, making it random. Maybe pop up into that ugly eye. Bang! <laughs> Chuck a little paint on there. Wiggle a little bit back here, right? All we're gonna do is mush it and blend it out. There is no way to mess it up. You can't mess it up, I'm telling you. Literally telling you, there's no possible way for you to mess this up. So, tell me where you're watching from. What is that favorite last meal? Let's read some favorite last meal comments here. Last meal comments. What are we gonna get? Lobster and crab, I dig it. I dig it, pretty little mistakes. Happy little accidents. Let's see, coconut shrimp. Seafood, I see it. Lots of stuff here, guys. Lots of lobster, I see everybody. Everybody want, and then Kylie said a strawberry go-go squeeze. That's awesome, those are fantastic. We're gonna come in here like this, we're gonna start to mix it down. And as we mix it down and down and down, it gets darker and darker and darker and darker, right? Less bright. Mixes in with those under colors that we put underneath. But you can sort of still see, as soon as we put color onto the canvas, you sort of lose all of your under color that you can see on the camera. But just like that, the more you mix it down, you can tell there's a lot of green in this section versus having bits of blue where it will change, right? Lots of green over here. Now, the more we mix it, the more it's going to fade back. So we decide how we want it to be, right? Obviously, don't want to leave that crazy bit up there. Not like that, anyway. All right, blend it down, bring it down. Pressure, pushing hard. What? Look at the brush bend as we bring the color down. Lots of pressure, right? Doesn't matter what it looks like down here. You literally want to take it and blend it. And all we need is that little touch of that light green color versus the dark. Don't want it to be super dark. You want that light green back in there, right? That's where you want to be. Now, anywhere that's a bit too bright or you want to change, you want to move it, you want to come over here. I like keeping one really bright area like that versus everything else. You want to know why? Because on a spooky old Halloween night, I would imagine that you might get a lightning strike. A feel of thunder. <laughs> Lightning and the thunder. Oh, shoot. Throwing white paint everywhere. <laughs> it didn't get on the canvas. I don't know where it went. But I didn't think there was enough on the end of that brush for it to uh, fly <laughs> off. Man, it's been a night already. The, the paint, we're, there's gonna get, we're going to get paint on the carpet. There's no doubt about it. It's already tried to get on the carpet once. It's just flung off somewhere. And I still, maybe it's on the camera. I still can't find the spot that where it would have landed. So mystery, mystery spot. Everybody has an old mystery spot. Now, 
We're gonna come over here. Not that kind of spot, ladies. Now we're gonna come over here. We're gonna grab up into our brightest cloud like this, right? There's a little dot. And then let's go back, load up the brush. The reason we use this mall stick, by the way, is so we can steady our hands, right? If your hands like this, I mean, you're gonna have a cool lightning bolt, but you're also gonna be worried about the pressure. This, we can determine the pressure, how close we get to the canvas versus how far away and how we can rest our hand like a, like a, um, uh, like an acrylic painter or, or a pencil drawer, right? Their background's already dry by now. And so what they could do is just come up here and splat their hand and do little details. Well, oil painters like Paint With Josh can't do that. So we have to use this to keep our hand off of the canvas, right? As long as there's a little bit of room in between your stick and the actual canvas, then you're not gonna touch anything, right? So let's come over here and let's decide. I think we got enough paint. I like going up first, bang, 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 bang. Adjust, move it, pop it, roll it. How far do you want your lightning to go, right? How far do you want it to go? That's the first question. Then we're gonna come in and we're gonna brighten it, right? Because as soon as you touch it to the canvas, it's gonna start to go, it's gonna start to mix in with those other colors. And all those other bits of dark, all that dark under color that we put back in there, it's gonna start to mix. So you have to keep adding and adding and adding, which is why, watch, I'm gonna let it pop behind that cloud. Maybe it came out right here, came brighter. Maybe it went back inside the cloud again, right? <laughs> right, right inside. Now, what if we're gonna to have to wait? I mean, we're gonna put Oh, guys, you know what? Let's go like this. Let's take a little bit of bright onto our brush. And if we get a bit of brightness and then we pop in, let's say the lightning maybe traveled and then popped out through the cloud, popped out right there. <laughs> Just like that, right? Now, let's see. Over here, we're going to take this little part and we're going to make it very, we want to leave it very bright because that's where our lightning came out of, right? So, very softly mixing it, just so soft. And that way it doesn't interact with the other pieces of cloud and turn all into the same color. Okay, and then we're gonna take our little mall stick down here again. I'm gonna use it to kind of rest my arm on and then allow it to move, you know what I mean? This thing can slide all over the place if you want it to. We're just touching the sides of the canvas or the top. Same thing would be on the bottom. If you wanted to use it down here, you could do it all over the place, up to you guys. Now, like old school Da Vinci, Right, he had a big monster one that would slide across his canvas back and forth, uh, the easel back and forth, and that way you could kind of move it out of the way like a library ladder or slide it over when you need it. I'm a painter on a budget, just like you guys, so I can't be going crazy like that. So we got to use the uh, the yardstick. This is like a dollar, maybe a dollar fifty at uh, Home Depot. You can get one of these suckers, and you don't need it to to measure anything. We just needed to put our hand on. So our lightning has come out. It went behind the cloud. It popped out a little bit, popped inside the cloud, and then right out of our little dot again, right? We're gonna put the dot, maybe pop it down. Very thin, very small, very small. <laughs> I love making lightning li uh, sound effects. Lightning noises. It's the lightning round. <laughs> that looks wicked cool. Now. What we have to do is soften it, just the teeniest, tiniest, like two taps, two little taps, just to make it blend the teeniest, tiniest little bit. Over here, we take this guy, like literally, a couple little things, just so you get that super bright area, right where the thing's coming out of, in our brightest part of our cloud, like it erupted with the light. <laughs> just wicked cool. Wicked cool. So, now we have to come in and we've got to make up some color, guys. So... Who here knows the three colors that we make in order to create a deep, dark shadow and why we bring that color down? See that? It looks like the bottom of the clouds. Lightning comes down in front of it, right? Now, who knows the three dark colors that we mix up every single time? We want to do like a faraway bit of forest or some mountains or a rock or a tree or this or a that or a rope swing. What three colors do we make up? Blue, black, and crimson, says Kelly. First person I saw to say it. Right there, right? Now, as we mix up those deep, dark colors, they turn into this, like, purpley, blackish mix. And so, as we get our... Ooh, that's that's too small. He's, he's a little baby. Little baby guy. 
It's not the one I thought I grabbed. That's what I thought I grabbed. Ha ha! So, as we get our big old brush, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna feed it down like this, right? Kind of feed it, wiggle it. Look at all those little striations. That's how thick the paint is, right? It's very thick paint. Wiggle it down, wiggle it down, spreading the bristles, getting it in between each one till it's just as sharp as an ax. And then we can come down here and chop down the brand new easel, right? So if you guys wanna get this easel, by the way, it does hold two paintings. I tend to keep this one empty now because people have complained that it's too hard to read anything of the comments when I have something here. So it does hold two canvases of multiple sizes and you can get this exact same easel that I use in multiple colors, by the way. Not the like the walnut one that I use. They have like a light colored one, maybe a darker colored one, but they're uh, $149.99. Go to the link in my bio. It's the one link that's in my bio. Click on it. It will take you to this easel. Hey, thank you for the gift. And you can guys can buy it. So I'm gonna come down here. We're gonna start making little taps, right? We want them to be very sharp. Now what happens, look at just the, just the, the top versus the bottom, right? The side we were using versus the side we weren't. And tell me what is the difference there? The top started to get really fat, right? It started to spread out. So we need to flip it over to the sharper side and continue with the sharp tip tops of the trees. See why all we needed was that little bit of green in the background to bounce off of? Now, our brush is all flared apart. So we got to come back in, wiggle it down, spreading the paint, the bristles all throughout the whole thing. Don't have to load it all the way up to the squeezy bit. Right, whatever this piece is called, it's like squeezing all the bristles inside. Don't have to hold it up to that bit, but, or load it up to that bit anyway, but you want them to remain sharp. So you need enough paint on the brush in order for them to remain sharp. And then all we're doing, just like a heart monitor or waves on the ocean, going up and down and up and down and up and down. So tell me where you're watching from guys. I gotta get a quick drink and holy moly, this painting is coming out fantastic. My goodness, just like every time you step back and look, you know what I mean? You take, a, you take a step back away from yourself and you look, you're too close to the project, you know what I mean? You step back and you look and you go, holy cow, look at that. Hmm. Oh, I like that lightning, dude, that lightning is wicked. That's wicked, wicked, wicked. We got Chicago, Austin, Texas. <sighs> Let's see, Connecticut, amazing work, thank you. Chicago again. I know Vegas Hellcat Kiss is here. She's sending uh, uh, gifts. I appreciate those. Oklahoma, Sacramento says leak. It needs a castle. <laughs> Alberta, Louisiana. Let's see. Connecticut, West Virginia, Florida. Florida, Ohio says blah, panda. Nashville. That's pretty cool. Nashville, Nashville. Does that say Nunavut? I think I've heard of that place before. Nunavut. Okay, we're gonna come in here like this. We're gonna go like that. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna start making more little bits. This time we're gonna pop up a little bit higher. Some of the times our treetops can look like a far off castle in the distance. Hey, thank you, thank you for the gift. We appreciate it. We appreciate, we being me. I appreciate you. Let's see, just like that. Pop, 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 pop. Look at all those little bits, you guys. Those are really cool, right? They don't have to be the fullest thing. It doesn't have to be the most amount of paint that you've ever used on the canvas. It can be, you know, whatever. It's all different to everybody, right? And all we're really worried about is what does that top line look like as we're going back and forth and back and forth. Maybe one of these guys just had like a, he was like the granddaddy of the forest and just sat out here chilling with all these other big old trees, but he was just a little bit bigger. You know what I mean? Get a little bit more detail on him. And then when we fill them all in around, then you kind of go, oh, I know what all those are now. You see, ah, I see what they are. Ah, they're all like a bunch of pine trees. Ah, I get you. I got it. I got it. I got it. When I hear like that, then we got another little guy. He's popping in our branches, smacking them against the canvas. Very light. Ooh, that's kind of cool. He's just like very thin little stick because the paint wasn't coming off of the brush. There we go. Pop it in, all depends on our pressure, right? Just like that, got the wicked little tree. Don't have to make it look perfect. It's so far away, we can't tell the details or anything. Now we come in here and we just start mushing in all the paint at the bottom, just mush it in. And then I'll show you something really cool. Just really cool. I just forgot, I can't even see over here. <laughs> there we go, don't have to go all the way to the edge, but I couldn't even see over to that side. Now, how are we gonna make all these little mushes look like trees with this brush? How are we gonna do that? 
Does anybody know how we do that? Because you guys have to tell me how to paint. I don't know. Like, what's the next step? You got to let me know. I'm the, I'm the student. You guys are the teacher. Right? What are we going to do with this brush in order to make those look a little bit? Ooh, swipe up. Good job. You were the first one. Sandra, I'm going to give you a follow for that. Oh, I'm already following Sandra. So I'm going to pin your comment. Thank you for the uh, the crane, the paper crane. Shit, I can't pin the comment. Pin the dang thing. There we go. We're going to swipe up with this brush, right? And that's going to fill in all the little bits. We don't want to go too high up and hit our big tree that's got more texture than everything else, right? Swipe it up. Don't want to go so high up that we hit our lightning either. All right, just trying to fill in the bottom. A little bit more pressure down here. Less as we get to the top, right? So we're kind of like smacking into it. Less as we drag up. Less and less and less. If you want them to be a little bit taller, you pull a little bit harder. But don't try to make them all the same length. Now look at that. Ooh, it's nice and crisp. Nice and crisp right at the top. All right, get the little streaks shooting right up there. Now, doesn't matter about our brush strokes down here if you can see any of those from like smacking again. None of this matters down here until we get there. You know what I mean? We're working from top to bottom in layers all the way down. And let's see, there's one thing I want to add to this guy just because I love this sky. And you guys know that when we love a sky, what do we normally add? That's one for, that's what, that's a good question for one of the, for a new follower or for one of the older followers. When Paint With Josh absolutely adores the, the painting that we're going for and that we're painting right now, what do I normally add in the sky and who does it represent? Hey, what the heck? What? Oh, what do we get? What do we get? Somebody bought something. It wasn't the painting, but somebody got something. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, the, the UFO Mountains t-shirt. Man, I wish I was wearing that shirt right now. Probably one of the coolest shirts that I've made, uh, in my opinion anyway. One of the coolest things. So thank you for that. I very much appreciate uh, you purchasing a shirt. That helps me. It really helps me. And you're right. Shibby. That's really cool. I'm going to give you a follow. Bang. You guys are right. It represents my mother-in-law way out here, right? My late mother-in-law that was taken away from us way too soon. And every so often when we do a really cool painting, I like to represent her in the sky as a little contrail or chemtrail, whatever you want to call her. Hey, a little bit like that. <laughs> Flying out. Wicked cool. Maybe it's a witch because it's a Halloween painting. Maybe she's a witch in this one. She wasn't. She was the sweetest lady ever. But maybe in this one, because it's a Halloween painting, you could say she's a witch up in the sky or something like that. A comet or something. Bang. Now we're going to get a little bit of white onto the brush up here. You're going to love that, that UFO Mountains t-shirt, by the way. You are absolutely going to love it. It's one of my favorite designs. And uh, I've have it, I actually have it on hats. I don't know if my hats are listed right now that have that same UFO design on the back of it, right where my, my logo is right here. But it's a really cool hat. Now you can see why we only took a little bit of white. Look, now all that white is now turned to that dark mix that we've used our trees with, right? We had to spread it out so it wasn't too thick in one spot. Now we're gonna come back in. We're gonna start to tap it straight down, right? Straight down. We come up next to it, maybe not at the exact same height, maybe a little bit lower. Tap it four or five times again. Bring it down, right? All we're doing, using the top of the corner of the brush. Pop, pop, pop. Right? Snap, crackle, and pop. What are you gonna do? All right, look, we haven't even used the the bottom half of the brush yet. It's a different, literally a different color, right? So all you gotta do, tap it in, bring it down, come up a little bit next to it, bring it down. Maybe this guy goes a little bit higher, bring him down. Come up a little bit, bring him down. All you have to do over and over and over and over and over again until it starts to be or starts to look however you want it to look, right? Now you've got this bit of foggy mist, some sort of something back there, right? We can take our brush from the bottom to the top again, pop, 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 over here, and then you can come in and mix it up. Now, depending on the brightness of your fog, right? Because we're mixing a very, very, very small amount of white with a lot of dark. So depending on the brightness of your fog, if you want it to be brighter, this is what you can do. Now, does anybody know why we make the foggy mist to begin with? Does anybody know? Can you tell me that? Why would you make, considering we're using the thickest paints on the market, you can't find a thicker paint than what we're using, right? Why would you think we would need to mush it and flatten it and thin it down 
and spread it out before we add something else. Why would you think that? Layers, layer, right? Definition, these are all good answers. Got to have it stick out, I agree. You guys are kind of missing the mark, though, that we're talking about, right? We're talking about how thick, right? So say that's, say we got all this thick paint, and then I wanted to add another tree on top of it, and then I wanted to add another tree on top of it, another tree on top of it. All the thick paint trying to stack on top of itself doesn't work, right? That's why we have to thin it down in between places. If you were actually to look at it from the side, you would see that the trees are kind of popped out a little bit further than the colors above and below because we've mixed those up, right? We've gone through and we've spread it all out as far as we can get it. So there is no streaks. If I were to take this and push, wow, there'd be a whole ton of the black streak across the sky, right? Because there's a lot of paint up here, but you have to soften it. You gotta bring it down back to the original canvas so we can paint on it more and more and more. If you keep adding thick on thick on thick on thick on thick, eventually it's not gonna work. It just won't work at all. So always softening in between each layer helps us add more layers, right? Now, if we want it to be a bit brighter, misty fog, quote unquote, whoop, whoop, <laughs> like that, a little bit of bright, mistier, foggy cloud, let's say, maybe you had a cloud come in from around the side, around from this side, and it was rolling across the, the landscape. Same thing we're gonna do in here. We're gonna pop it in, up into the thing, not all the way into the thick part, only into our misty part that we've already softened down. All right, come over there and we'll smash it and we'll mush it, turning the brush back and forward as you're, you know what I mean? Like mushing it all over. Can you guys see how much I'm actually spinning the, the head of the brush as I'm turning it so I get all the paint to come off everywhere, every single side in a random way, right? Because that randomness is what's going to make our painting cool. You don't have to worry so much about Clouds, oh my God, clouds, seriously? We're worried about the clouds, guys? Like they're clouds, why are we Why are we stuck? Why can't you move forward when we're sitting here with these clouds? Or why are you overthinking it, right? I know, I tend to overthink stuff too. Do it all the time, overthink stuff all the time. But they're clouds, they're supposed to be a wispy bit of random garbage, right? Just a, like a, if you, if you took like a, I don't know, like a big cigar, like, and it's blue, you'd have all this craziness come out. It's not a, a, a perfect shape, right? It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be brighter in some places. It's gonna be darker in some places. That's how it would be in nature. We've got tons of people over in the Etsy store favoriting stuff. So if you wanna grab something from the Etsy store, be sure you get over there quickly because it seems like people are just in there after stuff. Bang, blend it down. All this foggy mist as it's rolling across the land. I don't want to go back there, though. That looks like a spooky place. Looks like the, the thinnest place to get through the fog, but I don't know. There's probably spiders back there. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not big on spiders, right? Have you seen that meme where it's like, oh, walk through these two cars that have all the spider webs and the spiders in between for like a billion dollars? No, I'm good. I'm not going through there. Nope. Not going to do it. Don't care how much money it is. Not walking through those, like, like a bunch of freaking black widows. Like, uh, no, not doing it. Not going through there. Not going to happen. Like, uh, just talking about spiders, I feel like I could, I could itch. <laughs> What's that on the back of your neck? Ha! <laughs> it's, a, it's a haunted spider, right? Now, you don't have to, right? We've been working in all these layers. Our first layer was about that big. Our next layer was a little bit smaller. Our next layer was a little bit smaller, right? We don't have to use this whole thing and then start our grass way the heck down here. We're gonna run out of space, right? We can bring our grass all the way up to here if you wanted to, getting rid of all the stuff underneath and all that color, right? All depends on who? Not me. You guys, you, madam, all depends on you, whether or not you want it to look like that, not me. You. <laughs> All right. So, my goodness, my goodness. What is going on over here? I got tons of people in the friggin' Etsy store, man. Going wild. You guys better get over there if you want to buy this. 
or one of my original paintings. I only have like 25 original paintings. Not all of them are, are the best, you know what I mean? So if you want to get one of the good ones, get over there. Paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And remember, guys, we're only about 10,000 followers away from me letting my daughter do my makeup however she wants. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be, it's going to be tragic. So share the live, tap the screen, remind people that, hey, when Josh gets to 400,000 on TikTok, he's going to let Bailey do his makeup. And I'm really, really nervous about it. Really scared about it. So if you don't follow me now, follow me already. Uh, and if you want to see my kid do my makeup, we may just do it live. And then she's going to be like, I mean, she's 11, so it's not going to be that bad, but I don't think it's going to be good. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be that good either. So I think she might take out some frustration on me by doing my makeup all jacked up, right? Never know. But when we get to uh, 400,000, that's what we're going to be doing right here. Maybe we'll do it live. Maybe we'll make it into a video. Maybe we'll do both. We'll do a live video of, and then make it into a video. Like, do whatever the heck we want. We'll have 400,000 over on TikTok. So I wonder though, I don't think it's gonna happen. Like we're gonna hit 600,000 on Facebook before we hit 400,000 on TikTok, which is freaking insane. That just between the two apps, we're almost at a million people. Between the two, two apps, million people. Incredible, literally incredible. Okay, we're gonna come in here. We're gonna stop spouting about our couple followers that we have. We're gonna dab into a little bit of white and I'm talking about a little bit, right? It's not a big glob. It's not a whole huge amount. It's just a little bit on the end. You can even see all the other bristles inside because there's barely anything onto the brush. And come over here into the green. We don't want it to be super bright summer daytime green, right? No, we want it to be spooky nighttime green. Grab a little bit of our yellow, popping it in like that, right? Ooh, see that? That's bad. That's bad news bears right there. Who knows what is incorrect about this brush? What, what, which part about that brush is gonna cause us problems, right? Does anybody know? What part of this brush is gonna cause us the most problems when we go out there to touch it? Anybody know? The middle, uh, I guess. It's sort of one-on-one, -on -one. yeah, the big glop, exactly. The big glop right there. That's gonna cause us issues when we go to do it. And it's because we pulled out too much paint. See that? Way too much paint. So let's push it, drag the whole brush, Get all of it off that we possibly can. And now that's just about perfect for what we need. All right, we're gonna come out here and let's say we got like this crazy old hill out here. Start popping it down. Bop, 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 bop. Ooh, guys, look at that. Oh, it's a spooky old world out here. I don't know if that's like a song from size, probably just my imagination. So now we're coming down very lightly, very lightly, just like a typewriter, right? We go, we go like this. Scary stuff, scary stuff, scary stuff, ding. Right, go back. Scary stuff, scary stuff, scary stuff. Ding! Shoot it back to the other side, right? Doesn't all have to be the same color, of course, so every once in a while, let's go back. Actually, let's pop into that yellow bit that was too much, and let's just smack it into the bristles like this, right? Again, not overloading it. There's no big, thick, chunky bits in there. We're all good to go. And let's come in. Maybe this guy was coming down and then started going up. So let's say we had something over here, and that was popping down, and then maybe made like a little, just a little dip, right? That little change from when we turn from this angle right here and we turn, oop, about dropped it. We turn the brush angle down a little bit to then rotate down and then turn it flat again. That's gonna give us a little dip in our grass back there if you do it properly, right? We'll come back a little bit more of our green, just dabbing it in, coming up here. Now by adding the green, it's getting a little darker, right? So we can mix it, we can start to tell and decide what colors we want to have show, how brightly we want to have it. And all we'd have to do to brighten it up, a couple taps into the white, right? Maybe just a couple little taps into our yellow just to make it flat. And then pop, just a little bit, right? Less details, less times that we tapped created a thousand little yellow flowers out there or something, little bits of grass, little bits of something out there, right? Now, if we really want it to stand out, that we've got a, a change, we're gonna have to brighten it up a bit, right? Allowing it to go into the dark and then popping in a new little section of bright. And then we're gonna kind of blend this guy in and just that little change of angle right here, right? We got our angles coming from this guy, going back there, popping them down. And then we're gonna leave a little dark separator in between some bit, look at that, oh God. Sometimes it just works freaking perfectly. Just like, I don't even, I don't need, I don't even know. 
<laughs> I don't even know. But we just start tapping and we start working it. We start working it, baby. We start working that grass, right? Work it in. Tap it until you almost lose every bit of dark, right? Sometimes we save some bits. Sometimes we let them get very soft and very shadowy. Maybe it's a little dip. Who knows what it is? Who knows what it is? No matter what it is, it's friggin' awesome, if you ask me. Right? And you can do this with a bigger brush, with our two inch brush, would probably help. You'd probably go faster, but you're always on. Uh, uh, zip! Let me rewind. You can do this with a bigger brush, but you're obviously going to cover a bigger area quick, uh, faster, right? When in our case, I like to sort of make them up as we go. And so in a small brush instance like this guy, we can sort of piece out the land and it's different rolling hills, you know, without having to go ham on the, uh, on the big old brush. Now, come back in, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more white, a little bit more green, and maybe this guy will pop out as a different color. Yes, he did. Boom, straight down from over here, right? Into the darkness, into the darkness. And we tappy, tappy, tappies, all these little different rolling hills, little dark areas. They don't have to be so severe. Right? It doesn't have to be a huge gap in between, but a little bit of a gap. That shows something back there, a little shadow, a little different angle, a little here, a little there, as we're building it towards us, All right? Maybe this guy comes up to another little hill that's kind of separate from the further hill back there. And all depends. We're gonna use our little pivot point right here and go back and forth and back and just fanning it out. Pop, 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 right? Rounding it off, making it nice and soft. You do whatever the heck you wanna do, you guys, seriously. Now, let's go back in and start popping in some details way back here, all right? The more you go over it, the darker it'll become, so don't worry. Start tapping it in and tapping it in and tapping it in. And tapping it in. <laughs> it's like doing my taxes and tapping it in. There we go. Very cool. Shoo, right? All these wicked little rolling hills. Where are the hobbits at, guys? Where are the ring wraiths? Oh my God, should we paint a ring wraith? We should so paint a ring wraith in this one. If you guys don't know what I mean, please go watch Lord of the Rings. You're bumming me out with your negativity of not knowing Lord of the Rings references. So please go watch Lord of the Rings and I'm going to paint a flipping ring wraith right out here. We did one last night and it turned out just amazingly. So let's see if we can do it again. And uh, no promises. And if we don't like how it looks, right? You just blend it away into the cloud, brighten up that section of cloud a little bit, and poof, we're all there. So maybe Frodo and Sam were out trick or treating one night and uh, the Witch King of Angmar was flying over. All right, how do we do this again? It was like this and then down, right? It was almost like a it's a reverse bird to start, right? You know, I put my birds like that and we go upside down. And this guy was like, same thing, reverse angle. Okay, so it's like two little eyebrows, two little <laughs> eyebrows out in the sky. Can you guys see them? Yeah, you can sort of see them. This one is on Etsy. It's number 950, number 950. Now watch, I got to bring these guys down a little bit more, a little closer to the V down here, right? Leaving a space in between though because we have to take the actual ring wraith, the night hawk, we have to take it and it's got a little bit of a head, right? So you gotta come with his head and then his body will roll through the wings and his long tail comes out that way, right? So, just like that, you don't have to have much detail. You don't have to paint the entire body. You don't have to show the legs. It's literally gonna be like, flying through the, the sky. And then we can put the Witch King on top. That'd be cool. Pull off our little dragony wings by sliding them down. Just like that, right? A funky little dragon wing. There we go. Filling it in. I like it. It looks neat. Again, all it is is a far away bit of detail out in the sky. It's got to stay dark enough though. Got to stay, when you're working across a white cloud, it tends to brighten itself up very quickly. There we go. Bring in his wings. Bring in the wings. Darken them up.
there, there. Darken it up. Let's see. Over here, there we go. That mead and black, man, it's like a lifesaver, seriously. If you want something to be dark, go with that mead and black, dude. Mead and black, it's like ah, flying through the sky. Now, in order to add the Witch King on top, you have to have the smallest, thinnest, tiniest little point to our brush to get the Witch King to sit up there, right? So, in between the little V of the neck, and the, uh, and the wing is where he would sit. And we're gonna have a little body, but I'm gonna work on his head first. His head has a couple spikes on it. So if you can get one, couple little bits like that, make it very sharp, right? Now, create his sort of head. His body would be sitting off here. And then again, it all gets filled in just like that. Hey. So now we got the Witch King flying on top of the Nazgul out there searching for Frodo and Sam and us. And us. Kaka! <laughs> Man, that's cool. It's very easy to do, too. It's not too hard. Not too hard to do. What do you guys think? What do you guys think, of my little Nazgul out there? Wicked! Look, I'll give you just a quick, just a quick zoom in on him. Right? Little Nazgul man. Witch King of Angmar as he flies through the sky. It's pretty cool. I just figured out how to do him the other day and I've been, I did him uh, on, the, on the one and on this one. So, very neat. He's out here. He's flying through like Schmeagol's back here somewhere in the, you know what guys? Oh, guys, guys, right here, Schmeagol is actually hiding in the mist. Somewhere, he's back here in this little dark spot of the mist with like two little eyes, two little yellow eyeballs, hiding from the ring rays way up there as they're flying over, right? Really cool. Okay, now that we've shown our uh, Lord of the Rings geekiness to everybody, hi, I'm Paint with Josh, if you've never met me before, I'll gladly sit through Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit with you if we go on a long Netflix and chill date. Uh, I like long walks on the beach and long, long, long movies. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I do love Lord of the Rings, though. I would, I would do anything to go watch Lord of the Rings. Fantastic. Okay. Now, let's get some gravestones going, guys. Who knows how to paint a gravestone? Do you know how to paint a headstone or a gravestone? I like using filbert brushes, if you don't know. These are a couple different sized ones, right? Same company, that Bomahia company that we talk about all the time. We use, us, use these ones all the time. I need to get a smaller one first, and then we're going to get a little touch we have all this color, right? Got our moon off in the distance. So it's gonna be casting shadows down this way. We're gonna literally choose a side. Which side do you wanna use in the brush, right? So we use this side, we just pull it down. Just like that. Get a little paint on the end. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Now we'll come out here and maybe off in the distance of our little spot back here, we'll pop in a little gravestone just like that. Just pull it down. Boop. Little pull down like that. Now. And turn the brush over based off of our direction of our moon it's going to be casting a shadow down right and as they go the shadows are going to get bigger but you have to put one out there to start you can't just not have a shadow tap it the littlest bit right along the shadowy area now you got a, a an in uh, like a clear darker version then a little bit softer tapped over version of the same thing in reverse right now let's come back over here and we'll grab another guy. Maybe, ooh, we could pop one in. I don't want to get rid of Smeagol over here. Maybe we could put Smeagol right behind a tombstone. This guy will be a little bit bigger. He's going to sit up here on this little hill, right? So you can tell automatically it'll be a bit bigger. It's a bit closer. We're going to pull out the shadow in this direction because of our moonlight, same direction as the other thing. Very cool, but you can't just leave it like that. You got to go across it and tap it just a touch, right? And that way it softens it just enough to where you still have your grass, but you got a, a, a darker version of your tombstone out there. All right, now there's so many bits that we can use. Let's pop in a couple of those little smaller guys back in here too. A couple of little smaller babies. Maybe we sit them way back here. There's a little guy popping his little shadow. Actually, this guy's right underneath. 
So I have to pull his shadow kind of straight down because he's directly underneath the moon, pretty much. All right, this guy back here. Pop him in on the side of the hill. And his shadow is going to be going off slightly the other direction, just like a clock would be, right? If you were looking at that as the center of the clock, wherever our hour hand would be going or our minute hand as it was hitting each spot will tell you where to put your shadows as they go outwards, right? It's like the center of a clock, guys. Don't forget it. Paint with Josh method number 347. Treat everything like the center of a clock. Tap that guy in over here, just a little light, a little lightly, a couple little taps just so you get that difference in there, right? Start seeing cool little things. Now, let's go back with our liner brush and a bit of our Bob Ross dark mix, that crimson, black, and blue that we talk about all the time that we made up earlier. And let's come over here. Let's pop in like a little, little cross back here, something different. Something different, right? A little cross out there. And if we were going to reflect the cross down underneath, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We may not even see the whole thing in the grass, or by the time we cover it up, you may put another gravestone in front of it, but put something there just in case that you don't cover it, right? Tap it literally just once or twice in order to get it to soften its way down. Very, very cool, you guys. Now, those, at least these three, are pretty much all on the same level. This guy's on the next hill forward, so we can tell he's a little bit closer. He's a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, right? So let's decide. Maybe something sits a little closer back here, or we could do these guys way back here. Let's say by this guy. Put another little cross out here, but this cross is going to have a, uh, like a circle in the center. Just exactly like my tattoo has. Boom. Exactly. A little bit different. All you got to have, right? Now take our bit, come down, got our cross section, got our circle in it, just like that. Again, doesn't have to be the most perfect thing. Doesn't have to be the most perfect bit. We're going to go across. We're going to tap it a couple times anyway. We don't need them to be excellent, right? Doesn't have to. We got to soften the base of the, the bottom as well so it looks like it's stuck into the grass back there. I don't know that I want to go walking back here with you guys. You guys always pick the spookiest places to go on walks, and I, I don't think I want to come with. Whoever buys this one, you're going on your own. I don't want to be there. Not going to happen. Let's say we pop a new guy in right here, a little bit bigger than the rest. All right? It's about two full brush lengths versus all the other ones, which have been one full brush length. Now, let's say he's directly under the moon, so we're going to hit... And we're going to pull out just slightly in, you know, off, not directly, but slightly off. Come over here, tap it in, right? just sort of mixing it in with the grass. Bang, got a soft little tombstone right there. Now with the same brush, I mean, you could do this for hours. You could go do whatever you want, right? Maybe over here, let's purposely cover up this guy just a little, just a shadow of him. Boom, a little fatter. Shadow goes underneath, just a touch, right? Just like that. All you got to do is just start popping them in and popping them in and popping them in and popping them in, making them soft and popping them in, making them soft and popping them in. <laughs> All we got to do, something spooky, man, I'm telling you, Smeagol's little eyes way out there. With the ring wraith above, man, uh, I don't know, guys. It's very, very spooky. Very spooky. This guy needs a sharper bit of wing out here. There we go. Poifect. That's better. That's better. All right. Now, let's come in here. Maybe we'll put one more little gravestone out this way. All right. Sort of at the base of the other guy with the top and then just coming down a little bit. Got our moonlight off to the side. Boom. Right. I mean, how, how easy... Can you make it? Just like that. Just starting to piece them together, right? Now, as they get start getting bigger, we have to add more and more and more details and stuff. So before we start doing that, let's get a couple more in here. All right, I like the little dip down in between there, the separation of the grass that the shadow kind of comes across. We'll pop a guy in right here. Like that. Pop him right. See how this one's a little fatter? 
and shorter. That guy's a little taller and thinner. They don't all have to be the same size. They really don't. Now, while we keep doing this, let's make just a few more. I'm gonna put, actually, right there is where I'm gonna put that guy. So let's go small little guy off to the edge. And then a little bit bigger of a guy. Popping in like that. Again, off to the side. A little bit of shadow. All you gotta do, guys, pipe them in where you think you need to. Come back. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Just a little bit until it is whatever you want it to be, right? It's your painting, not mine. I just, we don't, nobody's caring what I'm doing over here. Now, I wanted to ask you guys, do you want to see something that's going to blow your minds? Like we, we've been doing little cabins, right? You want to see a little cabin over here? Just put a little cabin right over here, right? A little something, something sitting down in the foreground, about right there. It'd be a cool little cabin. It'd be a spooky little cabin, if you ask me. I don't know that I'd go stay in the cabin, but it would, it would be there. Wanda G says, yes, absolutely love this painting. You guys can't even see the whole smash. I guess we're in too close. Hang on, hang on. Hang on, my goodness. There we go, that's the whole canvas. Perfect. So, gorgeous little ring wraith. The Witch King of Angmar up here, flying. Looking for Smeagol, which is way back there. He's hiding, hiding back in the mist. Spooky little painting, guys. Spooky, so spooky. Up in a little bit of darkness. If you wanna have your shadow a little darker, you gotta play with it, right? My grandpa always said, you shake it more than twice, you're playing with it. But sometimes you got to play in order to get it to look correct and how you want it to look and as dark as you want it to be. And this, that, and the other, just by tapping. Tap, 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 real softly. There we go. Very cool. Now, let's add in a cabin. So we can use the same exact color that we've been making up for all of our little gravestones and mix it right up here. But what was this color? Do you guys remember? Because we need to make more, and I don't know what the color was. So you guys have to tell me what three colors I need to make up in order to create that dark color that we like to use. You guys have to tell old Joshy Pants, right? BBC, they say Sasha Stars, blow, uh, blue, black, and crimson right there. Everybody go follow Sasha and Alex. Alex is a really cool little kid. So we need to mix up our black and crimson and blue, like they were saying, right there. There, right into the nasty mix, right? Have a whole lot of it. And I'm gonna blow your minds with this right here. You've never seen, I bet, all you new followers have never seen Paint With Josh paint a cabin just like this one. So stay tuned if you're ready for something fantastic. Okay, we're gonna come in. We're gonna pull out, flatten out all of our paint like that, right? Scrape it, get that whole chunk of nasty grossness. Look at it, look at how thick it is. Oh, that's foul, a whole big bit. Let's come over here and let's pop one little thing off. We're gonna drag our whole knife down like that, right? Basically taking the whole knife, smushing it flat. And then we're gonna turn our knife so we have a little, like a little high point to our roof, right? Like this, we're gonna turn our knife like that, pull it down flat again. Now you have to have enough paint on the knife. We're gonna go two, uh, one, we're gonna go two full ones over here. We had one and a half on that side. So let's do two full, and then we're gonna turn our knife down this way, and we're gonna have our little roof section, right? And our roof's gonna come and it's gonna sit back here, and it's gonna turn down, and that whole little thing is gonna be filled in with some dark roofy bit, right? Be really cool. But you have to have one side longer than the other. You can't have it be, at least I don't like it to be exactly the same size. I like one side to be a little shorter on the pitch, one side to be a little bit longer, right? You see the difference on those? And then you'll have a really cool little 3D cabin. But that just looks like a normal Paint With Josh cabin, if you ask me. What if we did like a, like a little spooky double mausoleum up here, right? I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna pull down once on that guy. I'm gonna come over here, we're gonna pull down the other side, right? Make our little peak on the top, just like that. I bring it down so they almost match up, and then we can go highlight it and split them apart later. And we'll take our roof back this way and pull the top of our house down that way. Now we got a little double stacked cabin, guys. Double stacked mausoleum of death. 
Just like that. Yes. The spookiness level just went up. Can you guys feel it? Can you feel the air tonight? No. Seriously, though. No. Bang. Super easy. Little double-sided. Little bit of cabin. Just like that. Bang, bang. Got our roof that we can then decide where we want it to be. We'll highlight them in green. It'll be fantastic, you guys. So let's take our brush and we're very lightly going to pull it straight down, just sort of softening the paint. Right? Our little roof angles, we have to pull it to the side. Take our guy up here. Pop, 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 pop. All it's doing is just softening down the texture. Right? Same thing here. It's going to make it easier for us to add our next layer of texture. Like that. Again, taking our roof, pulling it over there, pop a little sign in. Ooh, that's a pretty little house. Now, since we've been doing these all in green, actually, we do have a little bit of brown. We could go brown or we could do it in green. Right. Let me ask you guys. I've been I've done two of them already. This same sort of composition. And this one's obviously a bit different, a little bit bigger, of course. But I've done the wood grain in green. So the whole thing is in green and blue versus adding any brown. Would you guys want me to add brown to this one for the cabin? Uh, and I do add brown to the tree limbs and stuff, but what's up, babes? Hello. Hello. Everybody says green. All right, let's do the green. Let's do it. We'll come over here. We're going to grab some white, and we're going to grab our green color and a bit of our yellow, just a little touch. And mix them up like that, right? Now, it's not so super green, and there's like four different greens all throughout that same thing. So we can scrape into it, come up here, and just very lightly start to drag down, creating our little green misty action-y bit. Come over here, turn our knife, drag it down again. We're not trying to let it break. We're trying to mush it on so it looks like wood grain. See, if you push a little bit harder and you drag it down a little bit more, you get that wood look. Just like that, right? Very cool. Now, if we mix a tiny amount of that color in with our darker mix, and pull it off to the edge over here. It should be a darker green color, which would be our shadowy side, quote unquote, right? Now, let's come over here, grab up the same bit that we used on the front. And we know we had our first one that came down. And then we had our second guy, so that's the peak of the roof. Right down through there. Mix it up, come over here. Turn the knife, we pull down our second peak. Came over here, two to go right there, right? And then we need to mix up a little bit of the darker color in with that green so we can get our last little side piece of our house over here. Look at that, we don't even need to paint the roof. The roof's already there, guys. It's already there in the dark color, right? So let's take a little bit of that same lightish greenish mix, maybe grab a bit more white just to brighten it up, just a touch, maybe a sneak of yellow in there. Woo, that's it. I'm gonna grab that sucker right there leaving a little bit of space in between. We're not gonna go right on top of the, the dark color because you wanna have a little bit of it exposed underneath, right? We can't have the, the same green and the same green touch all the time. It'll leave little spaces of dark, right? So back in here, we need that little area of dark, right? Where the pitch of our roof comes up. Take another little bit of green over here, touch the point right above the top, so coming down. That's the tip of the roof on that side, right? We honestly don't even have to paint the, the roof itself, like any shingles or anything, because having it black like that looks freaking awesome first. And uh, it's not required to do. You can literally leave it however you want. If we were gonna highlight it and make up that same green color, all we're doing is mixing the sap green and the white and the yellow together. And then maybe we'll see what we look like. What if we came in? Super bright, right? Trying to leave a couple little bits of darkness in between. It doesn't all have to be the same. Doesn't all have to be the same. Doesn't all have to be the same amount of brightness or color or anything. That looks really cool. And it's all with the same limited palette. We didn't add any brown, didn't do anything crazy. All right, just going back, trying to grab a little bit. Show our little roof, that's all. Just like that, right? Really cool, you guys. I like this one. Just edge down there. All of a sudden, we got a cool little roof. If you do ask myself, I'd say it's cool. Touch out there. Touch over there. 
Wicked neat. Now, let's take, and let's take our small knife, just because it's a little bit smaller, obviously. We're gonna come over here, we're gonna scrape out our door real hard. All the way down, removing all of the paint. Don't wanna have any paint there. Now, we can come back with our bigger knife, back into our little greenish color, and then line out where we want our door to be. With a little green line like that, right? All it's gonna do is tell us, hey, this is where some some janky old wood is right here. It's gonna line the outside of our door. Pop, little thing like that. If you can get it to come off of the brush, there we go. Boom, all you need, little bit, right? Now, take that other knife, come in here. Again, big scrape, big scrape at a window. And then you can also come up into our crow's nest, scrape out a little window up there as well. Now, in order to make it look like it's pitch black up there, you gotta go back sometimes with our dark area, fill it in. There's something gonna be hiding in there, I can tell you. Just like that, straight over the wood with the thick, dark color. And that way it blocks out every bit of darkness or every bit of color, adds a little bit of texture, right? You get that almost where you can almost, like, ooh, I can almost see something inside of there, right? So very simple little way to make a cool little cabin just like that, guys, just like that. Now, all you have to do, take the bottom and decide up here, we're gonna make this downward angle, right? So we come up here, Start working it down, working it down, working it down, working it down, working it down. And then if you have enough space, I didn't leave myself a lot of room, but you gotta work up the same thing. This is our little point, our lowest spot. And so if you work up and away from it and then up and away from it, it makes your building look more 3D, right? Very cool though, little double-sided building. What do you guys think of that? A double-sided, double-leveled building. What do you think of that? Oh, red eyes, we, we do green eyes. Look here as closely as you can with your phone. Get as close as you can. And we got some green eyes off in the distance already. Maybe there'll be a set inside of our building. You never know. The dragon is actually uh, the Witch King of Angmar from Lord of the Rings flying on his ring wraith. He's like, ah! right? You can actually see if you get uh, close up on it that I, uh, I actually put the, the ring wraith up there. Check him out. See, he's got his little spiky hat on the top. The Nazgul, the Nine, right? And then the little eyeballs right down here. Boop, right there. Hiding from behind, from betwixt all of the, the headstones, right? Sorry, guys. I know this is like so just, there we go. Drag it down. Wicked, wicked. More eyes. Yes, more eyes are needed. More eyeballs are needed. And... I agree with you, they are. So, first thing we need to do though is add a bit more from here, sort of change our, there we go. Getting a little bit low on me. A little bit low on me. Now we have to add that little touch of green line in order to say, hey, this is our little eave or pitch something. Just sort of outlines the thing. Doesn't even have to be perfect throughout. You don't want it to be. The light's not gonna be perfect. It's the middle of the friggin' night. It's not gonna be a perfect night out there. All right, let's get a little bit more of the green, a little bit more of the yellow. We'll dab into the old brush, right? Just a little bit, a little bit of color on there. And now we'll start to pipe in his grass over here, right? What are we, what, what are we starting to look like? As it comes out here, maybe we leave just a couple little dark areas in between. Doesn't have to be the most perfect, amazing thing you ever saw. Maybe he had a little, like a, little pathway coming out of his house. Something like that, right? Tap it over, up underneath, start to work it together, work it together, work it together. Little taps, little taps, little taps, little taps. Then we can brighten it up, right? Really cool. So let's wash that brush off before it gets any more filthy. It's got all sorts of darkness in there. It's got all the colors that we've used, everything. Now, remember, tell me where you're watching from. And what is your, your number one choice for your last meal? What's the last thing you're going to have on earth? I'm, you might be able to tell what mine might be. If it was going to be my last meal on earth. Mm. I want to know where you guys are watching from. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? And that's where I want to know. 
You guys are Carmen San Diego, and where in the world are you? Illinois, Montana, uh, Canada. We got Ohio, Wisconsin. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, we do need a cross on top of the mausoleum. You're right. Missouri, Wisconsin, New Zealand, El Paso, Denmark, Missouri, Lee Valley, Pennsylvania. Oh, we got Tennessee, North Dakota, Stockton, California, Idaho. Uh, Southeast Texas, Scotland, Nevada, Hawaii, British Columbia, Canada, Chadwick, British Columbia, Wyoming, Utah, baby Utah. Utah, that's my home state, Utah. Love me some Utah, baby. Love me some Utah. Now we're gonna switch to the bigger brush. We're gonna come into our green, a little bit of our white, just a touch though, nothing crazy, a little bit of that yellow. And get it onto the whole bit of the brush. Now this will fill up very quickly because we're using double the space. All right, so say you had a little guy out here, you just popped it down. You know how quickly you can do that thing? Bam! Knock out our whole little piece like that, super easily. All right, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more of our white, a little bit more of our green, just a touch. And we'll come down with this guy into there. Little bits, guys, right? All we're doing, working these little guys into little things and little bits and little bits and little bits. And I want to have a very dark area where he's going to have like a little path come out. So don't go too crazy for him, right? Don't be too nuts. There we go. Get a little bit more of our yellow onto the brush. Bring that guy down in here. Not going to have it be everywhere though, right? We put our green down. And then we got to put little bits of yellow. Just a highlight, little stuff. Doesn't have to be everywhere. We can tell what it's gonna be. We already know it's grass out here, right? We can tell. Bang, just like that, guys. That's freaking cool. And these little yellowy bits, as they populate themselves through our grass, get brighter and brighter as they get closer to us. Cause I believe that at night, we're, you know, we're gonna be able to see things closer to us with a lot more detail than we will things further away. Right? So come back in with that yellow, a little bit more over here, just to, to where you like it. Doesn't have to be, you know, what I have or my same colors or whatever. Doesn't have to be like that. Really doesn't. Take this guy down here. Tapping him in, tapping him in, tapping him in. We're gonna go cut our little piece of um, path back in there, right? A little yellow bits. We can even actually add a couple bits of uh, bushiness right at the base of our mausoleum, right? We'll take a bit of that thick oil paint right here, pop it up into the house, right underneath the window. Actually, let's do that guy over here too. He just looks like he wants to have something poked out right there. Just pow! How you like me now? <laughs> right there, right? Now, all we're gonna do at the base, very lightly, work our bit of greeny, yellowy paint into the bottom and sort of back and forth and back and forth. Just lets it blend its way out. Now let's switch to a different brush because I'm probably going to use that bush brush again. We're going to come back with a little bit of liquid white onto the brush. Pop it down in here. Grab a little bit of that greenish color, a little of our sap green. All right, right into there. We're going to come back over here and this will be the shadowy bit. So we're not going to cover all the dark and we're not going to cover the entire thing. Just a couple little dabs. That way we have a dark green shadow, a very dark black shadow, and then a gorgeous highlight on it. Just the prettiest highlight you ever done did see. Beat the devil out of that brush. Bow! <laughs> right now, we're gonna come back in a little bit of that liquid white again. Right over here, into our yellowy paint. And that way it's gonna pop off of our brush super easily. Very lightly, very light little touches. Right? Very small little things, not trying to leave goopy gobbles of paint on there. Just little baby bits. Little baby bits! Teeny, tiny, teensy little things that don't have to be super bright. Don't have to do anything really, honestly. They don't have to do squat. Let's come over here, grab up a couple more little yellowy, greeny things. And maybe, like we were saying, there's a couple eyes right up in the corner of our little mausoleum looking out at us like, Peeking up at the bottom of the corner, and then maybe standing deep into the, the darkness of the room so his eyes would be up a little bit higher. 
right over there. A little bit more paint on the brush. A little bit more. Whoop, right? We got one guy creeping, the other dude's just like standing in the back, like watching you. Watching you. Come closer. Come closer now. Come closer and see what happens. No! Okay. Let's take a bit of our dark paint that we still have on the brush for making all these crazy trees and different things. And let's start popping in a little pathway. We came out that way. We wrapped around. We could pop that a little bit further. Wrapped around, just scrubbing it out back and forth. A little bit wider as it comes down towards us, right? Very cool. Almost like a little bit of black top leading up to our, our little doorway. Right? Very simple, very easy little way to do it. Very easy little way. And then you can even come back with a bit of your grass in different places. If you thought you came over, didn't come over far enough. You know what I mean? You decide how small it gets back there, how close it gets out here. If you want, perhaps, a little bush. I mean, it's up to you guys. A little bush out here in the front. Pop it in. Bam, 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 bam. Get that darkness. Fill it in right on the edge of our thing. Then what do we do, guys? As we all know, we go back to that green color. Tap in a little bit of green underneath, all right? So now there's still a, a, a ring of dark shadow around that little piece that we popped in. Then we wipe our brush off or clean it off completely. Go back into our brighter yellowy bit. A lot more paint. Come out here along the tip tops. It gets brighter. Oh, look at that. But also leaving a very deep, dark, dark section, right? Where the light just can't reach down and get the whole thing. Can't get everywhere. So you gotta leave a deep dark area down there. And if you cover up all the shadows, where are all of our critters supposed to live? Right? Rule number one. Now, where are we gonna pop in our trees? I almost wanna put one right in the center, but we got that cross back there that I wanna keep. We don't wanna lose that. We're gonna put in one more bigger uh, tombstone right up here, maybe alongside of our big tree in the front. So. Maybe we could do one guy right there in between, kind of split those right in between, pop him down, lives right there. Maybe. I don't want to put anything down through the cabin that would end up living right here. So maybe we'll put another bush back here. Let's put a big old monster bush. It's a monster. We need more paint. Gotta have enough globby paint on your brush in order to leave those little fingery bits. You know what I'm talking about? When you push the brush in against the canvas and then you pull it away and the paint tries to stay attached to the brush, right? Got those little fingery bits that live out there. That's what you need. You gotta have enough texture on here in order to hit all these little bits and fill them all up and make sure that they're super goopy. You gotta have them be goopy. Goopy goops. Then again, come back in with our lighter color. Well, our darker green shadow first, stay about half just underneath, right? Leaving our whole dark ring around the edge. Wipe off the dark color, go back to our brighter color. Come back in, now we go around the edge, sometimes popping out away from those bits, leaving the deep darkness right in there, guys. All those dark separators that are way inside. They look friggin' awesome. So. Remember, if you want to buy this painting, it's available for sale, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Head over there, grab it while you can, because somebody might grab it before you. And if they don't get it through the show here, we've got just about 600,000 uh, Facebook followers that are going to have their go when they see the painting, and they're going to want to grab it. So grab it now if you want it. We're just about done. Going to put one more tree in right over here, right? We could so pop a little baby tree in right here, guys. Who thinks we could put a little tree in by the cabin? Who thinks? I mean, we could. We could do whatever we want. Jordan says, good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Tanya, for the follow. Appreciate it. No, we want the tree on the far right. Stone wall, they say. That'd be kind of cool, actually. But I love the, I love the shadowy bit right here, right? This little piece, it's almost a bit too big. This little shadowy spot back in here, where it's a little bit darker than the surrounding spots. That I love that spot right there. It's like a little dip down, right? There's some kind of ditch down in there. So I don't want to cover it up. 
I really like that area. You know what we could do though? We could brighten it a touch by bringing this guy down at a different angle, right? Filling that guy up, tapping him in, bringing that different angle down. So now they light up. It's not just one big smiley face across the canvas, right? Not just one monster giant smiley face back there. Little dark separator. Doesn't have to be humongous. We just want it to be a little bit dark. Same thing here. Dark separator, dark separator, dark separator, dark separator. Real big dark separator right here. Very cool. There we go. Right into his little house, man. That looks neat. Okay, let's put our one big tree in then. If we're not going to do any other trees, we could... I don't think I've used that one yet. We could do our big... Uh, Gravestone though. Let's get the gravestone in if we're gonna go. Let's do it right here. We got the shadow of the moon. So let's make it sort of big. We're gonna go over to the side, down, right? This guy's much bigger than all the other guys. He's much closer to us. You can already tell just how big it is by our outline. All that dark paint. And we're just gonna want to fill in the rest. So why don't we use a bigger brush that's got that dark paint on it and we can fill in the whole rest of that guy. Pulling him down, flattening him down. Remember, the angle of the shadow. Probably be out this way. Tap it in like that. Pop, 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 right? Cool little bits. Still got texture for our grass. And then if we wanted to, you could go over it a couple times so it still has that little bit of green, but we can still tell it's a, uh, it's a shadow like that. Now, Let's take, let's see, do you guys want to see me put a highlight on this and turn it into stone? You want to, like Medusa? You want me to Medusa this thing? Like I'll look at it and pow, it turns into stone? Or do you want to see me put the big tree in and then we'll come back and highlight everything after the tree? You guys let me know in the comments right now. Are we going to turn it into stone or are we putting in a ginormous tree? Let me know right here. Put a broken tree stump. That's kind of cool stone that's so cool i love it appreciate that big tree stone 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 tree tree first i'm agreeing with vegas hellcat kiss stone stone tree <laughs> creepy wood fence that'd be kind of cool too but if you were thinking about it right a creepy wood fence is going to cover up the majority of all the stuff that we just put in so not in this case but Let's get that monster sized tree in here first, right? And then we'll come back and highlight the tree and the gravestone and everything else. So let's come over here and just get crazy. Don't have to push in very hard until you start getting down a little bit lower, lower, lower. Boom! See how it gets thinner to thicker, right? Just like so. Very thin, very thin, very thin, very thin, very thin. It gets thicker, 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 thicker. Pow! Smacks right down into our foreground, right? Now we're gonna go back with the Meaden Lamp Black Color and our OMS, which is our Odorless Mineral Spirits, okay? Now the Meaden paint is a very thin paint. We all know it's wetter than the Bob Ross set that we've been using throughout the whole painting here. So it will come off of our brush easier, leave cool little details and little branches and they'll drop off easier, thinner, with more little sharp details and stuff versus the thicker paints, which tend to sort of like break up as they drag off, right? Even if you have the thinner in there, they still sort of break off. So I'm trying to get in here around you guys and see with these couple little branches, little things that pop off everywhere, right? Nothing cray cray, nothing too weird. You don't have a whole lot of space on this guy. But sharp guys, little fat guys, darker ones, lighter ones, longer ones as they crisscross across the top of that tree. Just cut him right through the top. Decapitation. Fatality. All these little branches coming off different directions, right? Don't have to be the most amazingest, perfectest little thingy that you ever done saw. You can have some broken ones that just... They just never made it. They didn't grow enough or something came along and broke it off the top before it was ready, right? All little things. This guy was like growing in a, in a sad, like 
waterless year. He's growing straight down almost. Over here, we're gonna come back. Maybe we'll pop off in this direction. Boop, over there. A couple little branches here and there. They don't all have to look the same. And then we'll come out this side. Crisscrossing, you gotta cut through some of those. You can't go over and around. It's not a, it's not a go-kart track, right? Can't miss all of them and go whoop, 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 with all of our branches. You gotta cut through a piece of at least one. It helps push it off in the distance. Trust me when I say, push them off, cut through them. Man, that's my favorite guy. Just poke straight out like that, right? Very neat thing. A couple little broken bits everywhere that never got started as branches. And all of a sudden you got a really cool tree, right like that. Now let's get to highlighting guys. So let's clean off these brushes. Then we're gonna highlight the gravestone and the tree trunk and put the old family in. We'll call it done. So if you wanna get this painting, it's pretty close to being finished. I know sometimes people like to wait until the end to see what it looks like, but you never know. Somebody else could be waiting until the end to see what it looks like as well. So don't blame me if you don't get it soon enough. Let's come in and we're gonna highlight our tree first. Let's make up a little bit of that tree color, a little bit of our yellow and our green. It's not even a tree color. It's normally, a, it's a, actually a grass color. But in our case, we're gonna use it in order to highlight our tree trunk and stuff. So over here, we're gonna to touch the side and we wanna keep a little bit of space between the green and the other green, right? This whole thing is green. So if we're just using green, you wanna keep a little line of darkness right in between it. And what it ends up being is like, you know when you, if, a, if an illustrator was gonna draw a tree, they would have a little tiny black line around the tree and then it would be filled in with color, right? So we're doing the same thing. We're, we're highlighting it, we're coloring it in, right? But we wanna leave that little illustration line around the edge, as small as you can get it. And that'll help it look more round. If you get green on top of green, are we gonna be able to tell the difference and where it is? I mean, you guys let me know. Are we gonna be able to tell the difference if it's green on top of green, on top of green, on top of green, on top of green? Are we ever gonna be able to tell what's part of the tree, what's part of the grass, what's part of the sky or the clouds? Anybody? You can answer, this is no, uh, no judgment. I gotta cut in front of you though. I have to be able to see if this painting wants to be sold, I gotta be able to see it. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Oh, I got an itch, but I don't know if I have paint on my knuckles. Ah, you ever rub your hand or your eye with the, <laughs> with the, with your wrist? No? Okay. God, my eye. Let's see. Echoes of Emerald at Midnight. I like that. It's a cool title. You guys already know, I don't even have to tell you. Start coming up with titles for this painting. And if you're lucky, I'll choose your title. And you get to name the Paint With Josh painting. It ends up being really fun. So you can go tell all of your friends, like, oh my God, guys, I named a Paint With Josh painting. Oh my God. You guys, it was like the best day of my life. Oh my God. Tap, 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 tap. Just like that. Now I'm gonna try to stay out of your guys' way while we do the rest. Again, we're not trying to get every single bit of the tree to be green. We want the darkness there, right? But we also want it to show that it's a little bit roundish. We have all these little different pieces of light, different stuff that's hitting our branches and all these things. Pop, pop. If it's too bright, just tap at it a couple more times. It dulls it down. Look at that tree. It looks super bright white over here to you guys. Hang on. There we go. That's better, right? It's a. It's not white. It's the glare of the uh, of the lights. Glare of the lights. Now you got to have a bit of darkness. Remember, back behind. So. As we come along and we put that extra dark paint in there, it sort of becomes as dark as our branches are. And with that extra texture and thickness, right? Cause we're just, we're just touching it like that. We're pulling our hand away, right? We're pulling the thing away. So we're just touching it. That's how you leave the little bark marks, right? And that's why the bark, hashtag bark marks. I don't know why that's funny, but hashtag bark marks. 
right? We're leaving little things that are sticking away from the tree. So when you run your finger along it, right? When the buyer buys it and they go like, and it shows up to them and they go like this and run their finger, they're gonna feel bark of a tree, like literal bark. Barky, what I call them? I already forgot it. What I just say, bark marks, right? Gonna feel the bark marks. That's a new, uh, right? Three Ps, bark marks. <laughs> what was Josh famous for when he taught uh, painting for all those years? Oh, the three Ps and a term called bark marks. Yeah, bark marks. Yeah, no, it became huge, bark marks. <laughs> it was like LOL, everyone was saying bark marks all the time. Nobody could go through the day without saying bark marks at least once. <laughs> Loser. I'm a literal nutcase. I literally don't know why you guys watch me. You, you, it's, you, I know, actually I do know, you guys are watching me because you're literally watching a person go insane slowly over time, right? That's okay. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here to go insane for you guys over time. Now we're gonna take a little of our white on the fan brush, right? We're gonna come up here, I'm gonna show you how to turn a stone like that, right? We go over here, we come up very lightly, start dropping down the white. Now, you don't wanna have too much paint on your brush, that's for certain. And we don't wanna go out of the lines, you wanna have a little dark line around it. All right, hold it down, oh my goodness. Just so fresh, right? The more we mix, the more we pull, the more we pull and pull and pull, right? The more it's going to dull its way down. There we go. Dull its way down to this darker, 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 darker color, right? And then eventually it'll end up looking super neat. Just like that. The more paint that you push on there, the brighter it becomes. And then the more times you go over it, Right, the softer and softer and softer it gets. Now, for whatever reason, this side, so there we go, It'd be a pain in the butt. Now you can see along the top, we've left a little dark line around the edge and left this side a little bit darker on purpose, okay? We're gonna go back to the Maiden paint with the liquid, uh, the lamp, uh, the lamp black with the odorless mineral spirits in it, right? And then I'm gonna zoom you guys in real quick, right down here, check this out. Show you this really cool thing. All right, just for how we're gonna make this guy 3D. You ready? And take it like that. We're gonna take our brush, very sharp, very thin little brush. Take our yard stick, okay? And then we're gonna attach our way right here and go around the edge, creating our dark line, just like an illustrator would do. Bang, got a little bit of dark line around the side. Go back in to our brush right here, all right? You do the start right on the corner and then go thin and get thicker and thicker and thicker and then boom, hit the edge straight down. Just like that. Then we'll do one more around the side and we'll be all good, guys. All good, right? Pick it up right here, going down, going down, going down, going down. Chinatown, baby. Hey, now you got a roundish looking little, um, Gravestone, poof, just like that, right? Excellent, I mean, how easy can I make it for you? I can't make it any easier than that. Now I gotta back you guys up, hang on. Hold, please, zip, zap, zoop, and we're back, see? Bingo, bango, guys. So, trying to get you guys up here. The glare on that tree makes it look really, really, really white. I don't know why it's that glary, but for whatever reason, that's what we're dealing with tonight. And I can't get my tripod to freaking act right. God damn it. There we go, good enough. Good enough. That makes it really dark. That makes it really bright. So we'll figure it out later, I guess. We'll figure it out later, but that looks really cool. Now, let's take a bit of our grassy color and work in our little bits of tree, work in our bit of our grassy texture, kind of dabbing it in, keeping the darkness, right? Very cool, guys. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this one. Not if you ask me. A couple little yellow dabs. 
couple little dabs right out there. Ooh. You have like a zombie arm come up from underneath the grave. Be really cool. Be really cool. Oh, tree shadow. You guys are right. You're right. You're right. You guys are right. There's enough room. I'll give you credit on that. Whoever said it, there's enough room. Remember the angle. Boop. So we'd be down this way. Need a lot darker paint than that. There we go. Boom, 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 right? A little bit of shadow of our tree, but you don't have to have it be so super dark. So we go back over it very slightly. There we go. Guys, uh, that's freaking rad and a half. If you ask me, just rad times 0.5. Rad and a half. Although I do want maybe, maybe just a branch or two coming out of this guy. Caw -caw, just a branch and a half coming out of these guys. Yeah, reaching out there, getting all crazy. Just more and more and more details, right? More details than a detail, than a detective. Little gets, little buggers. So remember, if you buy during the live show, you can uh, have your choice about the Paint With Josh hat, or you can get the brand new Paint With Josh backpack, totally up to you, all dependent on you, what you want to do. And all you got to do is buy the painting, and you'll get that free upgrade. Well, bits out there, guys. Oh, my goodness. Woo, Nelly. So the one thing I'm noticing is the that's very bright in comparison to these guys. So now that means I've got to sort of highlight very sloppily, by the way. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's not our focal point. This, this, and this is going to be where people look first. And they're going to start to pick up everything else. This is probably going to be the last thing they see right up here, right? So um, we don't want to make it as bright. I'm going to touch a little bit of light color on there. Right? A little bit of light. Maybe one, just a little touch on that guy next to him too, because they're about the same distance. Maybe this guy too, just a little thing. A little touch a -roo. Then we're going to work it down with the color, blending it down, kind of mixing it in on its own. Pulling some of the darkness down, right? Lighter and darker and darker. And then those guys way out there are super dark. And we can't see. They're just a silhouette out there, right? As they get further and further and further away, they get harder and harder and harder to see, if you ask me. But this guy look, might look kind of cool with just a little. Just a little. I mean, you can't have a lot of paint, especially when you're using a giant fan brush. I want to have a lot of paint out there. Oh, you guys. <laughs> okay, let's see here, just right here, let's see what we could do with a little bit of this and that. Pop it right out of the trunk of the tree. Looks friggin' wicked red. The house looks awesome. We got the Nazgul. We need the bird family in there. Maybe a couple stars in the sky. What do you guys think? Couple stars in the sky. So first, let's put the bird family. We're we're kind of flying like, I don't know. Oh, I don't want to put us too close to the lightning, but I don't want to put us too close to the Nazgul either. Goodness. We're trying to fly away. Right there, flying through the clouds behind. We're following. We're following him. We've got a couple sets of hidden eyeballs all throughout the painting. So take your time. Try to find those hidden eyeballs and little differences. And uh, again, this one turned out absolutely stellarly fantastic. I'm almost happy it didn't sell during the show because then I get to keep it for a few days. Man, it's gonna be wicked cool. So let's get rid of this. Let's sign this old bugger, who knows, maybe down here, just down over yonder way. And we're talking about so inconspicuously small that you'll never even see it. I mean, it is pure white paint, but very small, very small. Especially on 24 by 24, very, very small. <clears throat> so I've been seeing some wicked Halloween tutorials, guys, that I've put out 
that you guys have been doing. So I want to thank every one of you that watches my videos on YouTube, that watches me right here on TikTok, that paints along, that tries to paint along, that does it in acrylic when you don't have the oils. I love you guys. I love you. All of you. I love you so much because you help me, right? Every time you comment, every time you tap the screen, every time you send the live to somebody or be like, hey, have you seen Josh's new funny music video? Go check that out. It's got like paint with Josh before you go, go to like, you know, uh, <laughs> I forget the name of the real song now. Wake me up before you. Wow. I've heard it so many times with my own lyrics that the song is just now paint with Josh before you go, go. That's it. There's no more. That's it. That's all we get. So start coming up with a name for this painting, guys. What would you think this one would be called if you were to paint it and you were like, you know what? This is my masterpiece of masterpieces and I need to call it this. What would you call it? A little bit down. Still not as bright as I want it to be. So let's do this instead. Get a little of our liquid white and break down our yellow greeny color into a much thinner color of paint, right? Then we're going to come back and we'll try to get the cross to light up over here. There we go. Remember, you want to have a dark side. You got to have one side sort of split up. Here we go. Just like that. Wicked cool. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. Bang, bang, right out on the edge because we'd have a little bit of shadow in between. That's pretty neat, guys. Good idea. Good idea on that one. Lost Souls Church. I dig that too. But Death Valley is still in the lead. Tombstone Hill. Help Headstone. I dig that. What was that? The search for... Is green my favorite color? No, not really. I mean, kind of, but not really. The search for the halflings. Oh, that's cool. Oh, you want you want some writing on the tombstone? It's too, it's too crisp. Well, what should we put? I mean, that's, that's a very uh, personable thing. You know, it could be maybe something the buyer maybe just lost somebody. Maybe we could put grandpa's initials up there. Hmm. Maybe we could just put some scribble. Who knows? Add Moss. Add my add Kate to it. Get some Kate up there. Kate Moss, right? Guys? No? Nobody? Yeah, it's okay. All right, let's see. Let's see. Maybe I can predict my own death. Years into the future, right? Years into the future. Little little scribblings, little scribblings of lettering. Then we'll have like a like a little fake date out here. Let's just put from Dude, I can literally inscribe my own birth date on here. And that's how cool these Zen art brushes are. That's a small brush. Hmm. Let me give myself a hundred years. Let's say tw 1985 to 2085. If I get to 2085 and I'm still painting for you guys, then something went wrong. <laughs> I'm a hundred years old and still painting for you guys and something went wrong up here, man. So 2085 or whoop. That's pretty cool. Valley of Dragons. Sign the stone. Like, do my, my, I don't, I've never even tried to do it in a, in a brush before. Death Valley, I dig it. Yes, 1985, sir. I am a crisp, young, 38-year-old boy. <laughs> a man boy, a man boy at heart. All right. Let's see. I've given myself 100 years. So we're saying sign the stone like my normal, like my J on the back of the, of the thing or put my JK right over here because I got it. It's just, it's hidden down here off the screen. Black crow on top of the stone would be cool. 
Put Brandon Lee right up here on top of the stone. Yes, do my thing or just my initials, guys. And I'll do the stars. I'm going to add the stars right now. Like, people just go, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I ask you, like, 19 questions. Yes, what? <laughs> Stone needs roughing up. Oh, I'm so sick of all your guys' notes. You know what? No more notes. I'm not messing around with your notes anymore. You guys are no longer allowed to give me notes. Not tonight, anyway. Sick of these notes. You should do this. and You should do that. It's my painting. My dang painting. It's going to be hard to sign the sucker with the... Nah, see, that looks like crap with my with my um, actual signature on there, which is fine, because we take it and we mix it up and we dull it down and we come back with a touch more white and we brighten it up and mix it down until it gets back to its original color that we like. Very cool. So that idea didn't work, which is fine. Back in here. A couple more little tappy tappies. And then over here. There we go. I like that. That's pretty cool. Ooh, that's way too much paint. Way too much paint on the brush. Give myself a hundred years, guys, to be up here on screen for you for one hundred years to come. The next hundred years. <laughs> Paint with Josh will rule the internet painting land. He shall rule for a thousand years. I should have put 3,085. I should have. I should have. Actually, it's not even dark enough as I want it to be. Gotta make it dark, baby. I'm gonna keep this one for myself since you guys obviously don't want it. I'm going to keep this one. It's got to be perfect because I don't want to have to go back and add anything over it. Nice and dark. 1985, the greatest year in all the land. Can't ignore me. Cannot disagree. So... This one will be worth a whole lot of money if I do actually end up dying in, in, 20, 000, uh, in 2085. That uh, will be insane. I just, I just Jostradamus to myself right there. Jostradamus. Let me get one more little bit of bush. Because, you know, every so often, you gotta, you gotta have a little bit of bush. A little bit. A little bit of bush. We'll come on here. And a little bit more flavorage to the bottom section down there, right? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. A little bit of our green. Back in right underneath. Doesn't have to all be the same. Back to the bright yellow on top. Doesn't have to be everywhere. I want it all to be the same bit. That's cool right there, if you ask me. That's a cool one, guys. I'm thinking Death Valley. For whatever reason, it's like close to Las Vegas. I've driven by Death Valley a million times, and I've never thought to name a cemetery Death Valley, which is really cool. To me, if you ask me. So, keep coming up with the names. Smeagol's Demise. Oh, my God. Smeagol's Demise, guys. Dragon's Death Valley. The Watchers. Mysterious Misty Hollow. Mists of Tombstone Valley. The Valley of Death. Misty Night, oh, it disappeared. Uh, the Fog of Death, Dracula's Valley. This is my favorite one you've ever done, says Sarah Barra. Sarah Barra. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see, cross above the name. Oh, on the tombstone. Yeah, I think I need something above that. Oh, you know what? We're gonna put in my, we're gonna put in my cross tattoo right here on top of the tombstone. That's that's one good note from you guys. All right, you got one good one. I'm just messing. I love you guys. I love you and all your notes. Let's come in here, right? We're going to do like a cross right here. Dang. Damn, we're good. I am. 
amazing. I'm sorry. I just have to, I amaze myself. When something comes out just as perfectly as you want it to come out on the very first time, that is the joy of painting, okay? That is the joy. Oh, damn, that's cool. Okay, I don't want to mess around with it anymore, but that is a wicked cool, whoop, little cross right there. That's my tombstone. I don't know what the writing says above it, but that's cool. That's it, Josh, nothing else. Don't touch it. Somebody better buy it and tell me to stop painting it, right? Have the Reaper standing there like, <laughs> actually the Reaper's back here inside the, um, inside the house back here. He's got his little yellow eyeballs poking through right there. And then he's got somebody creeping up in the corner, kind of peeking out from, from behind the corner. So if Duchess wants to buy it, if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, right? Type that into your Safari or your, uh, if you're on Etsy and you already have the Etsy uh, app, type in Paint With Josh, all one word, and it will bring you up to my, my page. And if you search, once you're inside my page, I've got a little search bar because I've got 200 items you'd have to scroll through, right? So I have a little search bar that'll say, uh, you know, you type in the word TikTok or type in the number 950, 950, and it'll bring up this painting right here and you can purchase it. I know, I love the details on this one too. And you guys can't even see all the details. Like you're still, you're so far away that you won't be able to see all the details until I take a picture and I post it to Facebook and then you can zoom in, you know what I mean? Oh, you guys are gonna be zooming in on this one for days. Oh, for days. I love, you know what I love? I love the light area back here, the little bit of brightness out there, like the moonlight's picking up in different places on the hill, the darkness, and then the brighter it gets as it comes towards us, we get all this brightness in the front. Looks super cool. So, there's a sparkle. There's always a sparkle to paint with Josh. We have a sparkly goodness. By the way, we're gonna be mailing out um, London's candle, uh, the crappy candle orders. We're gonna be mailing those out tomorrow. There's a few people that are getting some and they're gonna be mailed out. She's going out of town, so I'm gonna be doing the mailings. Look at those stars in the sky. You could do little um, fireflies just by adding little bits of round bits of like aura, a bit to it, right? A couple little fireflies flying around. They gotta all pretty much be about the same size, right? They don't all have to go too far away. And this will kind of confuse people on maybe those aren't eyeballs back in the distance. Maybe there are a couple fireflies out there at night. Just maybe, or maybe not. Here we go, just a couple. Little spooky little sprouts. So uh, I only sell prints usually if the painting, like if the painting would have sold during the clouds before anything else was painted, that means that multiple people wanted the painting and it had to be purchased quickly, right? So in this instance, nobody has still bought the painting and uh, what those, <laughs> that thing? <laughs> uh, I'm a pretty professional whistler, okay? Uh, no, but uh, nobody bought the painting, so I, why make prints of a painting that nobody wants, right? So, let's see. How do they know if it's Smeagol or not? Well, Smeagol, as we know from watching the show earlier, we can tell you that Smeagol is back here. This is obviously some devil creature in his little, his little, uh, his little, like, Igor. I don't know who it is. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a spooky, maybe it's the groundskeeper of the place. Either way, I'm not going in there to find out. Not gonna do that, right? But I do sometimes make prints of the paintings that I'm really proud of. This one might be one of those. It's actually really nice. Uh, there's not much, like a lot of times I look at the paintings and I go, you know what? That's freaking rad. Or that didn't really work out as good as I wanted it to, or this or that or whatever, right? And then sometimes you look at it and you go, holy, this one came out amazing, right? But in my mind, amazing is different than your mind. You know what I mean? Like it's all perspectively different. Everyone's got a different thing that they're gonna like. And uh, we don't have to do that side because the clouds stay. Everything wraps around now, it's all finished off. Look at all those details along the side. <laughs> okay, let's clean this off. Give me one more round of names, guys. One more round of names. And then I'm gonna choose. 
So I'm going to be cleaning these off and I'm going to look. Best one I've done yet. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Do you have any orange spooky paintings? So this one's $269.99, I think. But it's free shipping everywhere in the world. And I don't have any orange spooky paintings. Both the two orange ones sold, but they're both also downstairs in the garage. Not easily grabbable to where I could show you what they look like. The death of John. Oh, I hate that. I did not like that at all, Chloe. Chloe, Chloe hurt my feelings. She hurt my feelings right here. Right there, Chloe. <laughs> Midnight Eerie. Ooh, I like Smeagol's Demise. I really like that. That's like, that's that's in second place. Smeagol's Demise. Valley of Shadows. You guys are good at this. Do you dare? I don't. I don't. Uh, the Fireflies are the best. Thank you. I appreciate that. Emerald Haze. I do like the Blue Moon. I appreciate that. Sage Moon, Emerald Death Valley, Ring Amongst the Graves, Conjure Hollow, Perido Hallows. I like that. I like that. Crappy Candle says, awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, I know, I know. I got you, Clay. I'm just messing with you. Dark Shadows. Oh, hey, I'm moving to Vegas, says Timo. That's awesome. More bats. Hmm. It's not really a bat. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a ring wraith. It's a Nazgul. It's the Witch King of Angmar. He'd be pissed if he thought you were calling him a bat. <laughs> Let's see. I dig it. I love all these names, guys. Dragons, Prizes, Valley of the Haunted. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Nazgul Nasties. I like that one. It's the Nazgul Nastiness. <laughs> So this one's $269.99, free shipping around the world. It's 40% off its normal price. And if you buy it during the show, you get your choice of a free Paint With Josh hat in any color that we offer or a free Paint With Josh backpack. This exact one. I just kissed your backpack. This is the backpack that you'll win. <laughs> win. This is the backpack that you'll get along with your painting. It'll be in the same box. It's got a, a laptop sleeve. It's perfectly sized for carry-on travel. I've tested it. I have the exact same one. I took it on Spirit Airlines. I didn't have to charge a single thing to bring it onto the plane. Fit right in their little space perfectly. Comes with a space in the back, and it's got a little space in the front that even has the logo inside the front, guys. So, wicked cool backpack. It's got a whole of my, my websites around the edges. It's like a little Louis Vuitton style, little mini paint with Josh symbols everywhere. Look. Little mini paint with Josh is all over the place. So if you want to get it, get it now. Get the backpack or the hat for free. Mm. That hat's a $50 value. Oh, sorry, the backpack. $50 value, by the way. It's like a Jansport backpack, man. Mm. Really cool, though. So. Let's pick a title and get the heck out of here. I feel like Aragorn would be running through looking for the hobbits. I know. Night. Oh, that's it. Oh, you guys. You guys. Ava, Ava, Ava. Ava, Danella. Night of the Nazgul. Like that. Like that. I think you're going to be the winner. I think Ava just won out. She just won out with Night of the Nazgul. I like that, dude. And now I really want to go watch Lord of the Rings. Like all the all this talk about Nazgul, and Frodo and Sam, Schmeagel, and Gollum, Gollum makes me want to go watch Lord of the Rings. So, Night of the Nazgul. Ava wins hands down. They're saying in the comments, hands down. We got the best one. And even the, the, even the other competitors agree. Night of the Nazgul. That's really cool, dude. I like that. Maybe we got other Nazguls are in there hiding, right? I need to pin. Can somebody pin her comment again? Oh, never, never, never mind. I just repinned it. Perfectly. Perfect. All right. There we go. We're going to wash off the rest of the brushes. Everybody say congratulations to Ava for being able to name the painting Night of the Nazgul. I really think that's a cool title, dude. I really like that title a lot. Night of the Nazgul. It sounds like a uh, like a like a, a dating show. 
You're the next contestant on Night of the Nazgul. Come on down. Here you go. You got Bachelor Knight number one, the Witch King of Angmar. He enjoys long rides on the back of his ring wraith. <laughs> ah, and he enjoys murdering things and trying to hunt down Frodo and Sam. That's the way it goes around Night of the Nazgul. I like that. That's a really cool title, guys. I like that title a lot. And now I want to watch that show. Somebody produced Night of the Nazgul as like a dating show. I'm all about it. And I want to watch it. Thank you for repinning it. You guys are great. It's like you guys almost know me. Like, you know my, uh, my ADD is going to kick in. And I'm going to forget what the heck I was doing about three seconds ago. So thank you for pinning that again. And if you've ever wondered what it looked like when a green apple vomited, that's what it would look like if a green apple just happened to be sick. There's a lot of green on my table today. So, wicked. What is a Nazgul? A Nazgul is from the Lord of the Rings series, right? He's, a, he's one of those, like, immortal, unkillable creatures that flies around trying to find the ring for Sauron. So, that's a Nazgul. The nine, you know, the, all the nine kings, the human kings had rings. They turned in. It's actually N-A-Z-G-U with a little apostrophe over the U. L is how you spell it. Nazgul! So, let's turn this sucker around. Now that we got all of our brushes all dried up, spin it around. This canvas feels even heavier because we've got so many details on it. So much paint. Put it there. Number nine, Biddy. Night of the Nazgul. Dig that, you guys. That's wicked cool. Wicked cool. We painted this one on 917 of 2023. And right after this, we're all going to go check out paintwithjosh.com. Otherwise, my manager yells at me for not saying go check out paintwithjosh.com. So go check out paintwithjosh.com so I don't get a phone call after the show with him chewing me out, okay? It's not like that. It's not like that at all. But I used to not say paintwithjosh.com. And now that I say go check out paintwithjosh.com, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't imagine how many people actually go check out paintwithjosh.com.